Uh, hello, so today we are doing this problem called maze search, but with a little bit of twist. I have a, with a little bit of difference than the problem that I have a video in, um, of um, just before this video on my channel. Um, and so the video, the, the problem is about um, finding a path from a source or a start to a destination. Um, the same way as the previous problem, except the previous problem we just wanted to find a path, any path. We just wanted to find if there is a path between a start and a destination. With this problem, what we are looking for is the shortest path between a start and a destination, and we want to return that distance. And also the other difference is, is that if we don't find any path, we need to return minus one. So that's what the problem says. Now let's see how can we solve it. So um, the the only difference right now is that the distance, like we are looking for the shortest distance. So we can do the normal BFS like we did before to explore. So basically, let me just first iterate how this problem um, is constructed. So basically, you can go left, right, up, and down. But the ball, when you when it moves left, it doesn't just move one position. It keeps rolling until it hits a wall, it stops at the position before the wall. So go all the way left, it hits this wall here, it stops at this point. It goes all the way down, it hits this wall here, so it stops at the position here. Um, if it goes from here to the right, it hits this wall, and then it stops at this position. So you get the idea. So the shortest path for this one would be going left, hitting this wall, going down, hitting this wall, going left, hitting this wall, and then going down to hit this wall and stop here, and then go right, hit this wall and stop here, and then go down, hit this wall and then stop here, and then go right, hit this wall and then stop here, and reach the destination. And overall, if you count this, that would be 12 moves through the empty spaces here. So we count only the empty spaces. Um, so let's see how can we solve this problem. So. Um, instead here, the, the problem is no longer about true or false, the problem now is about the distance which would be here 12 and here minus 1 because there is no um, solution there. Um, okay, let me just take this test cases so that we don't need to do that again. Um, and um, it's called short distance, so I'm going to solve this first with BFS, so let's not this as BFS, and let's put that. And so, the solving it with BFS would be just going level by level, um, and exploring all the neighbors until we reach the distance, but since we are looking until we reach the destination, but since we are looking for the shortest distance, we will keep exploring, um, and we will check if we have a better distance each time. So each time, check. So this would be BFS. Um, keep checking um, if there is if there is a better distance. Update. But otherwise, just normal BFS. And uh, so basically, we can go through. Um, we can go through a node uh, or a position twice because we can go through a position twice as long as we ha as long as it has a better solution a better distance right so basically let's say we can we arrived at this position by going like let's say this way and then let's say by going this way down and then or this way left and then down and then right and then left, and then maybe we went here or something, and then went up again, and then went down again. But we will find that, okay, we can get to the same point by going just left, and then down left, and then we we'll arrive at that position. So, yeah, so we can pass through the same position twice. It just has to be a better distance, because otherwise it's, it's not useful. Um, and so, let's just... Um, fill out our uh, DFS. So we know that we need the directions of the neighbors left, right, up, and down. So those would be 0, 1, 0, minus 1, and 1, 0, and the usual 1, minus 1, 0, 4, down. And then it's BFS, so we need a Q. 
Um, and with Python, I'm just going to use DQ. This. And, um, and we need to fill the DQ with the start position. So that will be start zero and start one. And we need to do while queue. And we need to pop left from the queue to get the first element. And with this, we will get x and y. And now we need to get the neighbors of x and y. That's just the template of BFS. And so that would be uh, by going through the directions. So dx and dy in there. And then we will construct the new uh, position that we are at. So one thing though that I know that I didn't mention is that since we want to check if we found a better distance, that means that keep track of distances, right? So that we can know if this one is a better distance. So keep track of distances, which means we need to have an array of distances, right? And so let's just construct that array. So we have array of distances, let's call it uh, distances and let's just construct it. So it would be, what would be the value that we would want to initialize to? We can initialize it with minus infinity so that, uh, sorry, with infinity, uh, with yeah, minus infinity so that every, um, so what we will need to do is check if a new distance, let's say two is better than distance say for the first for something that is just explored is then its current distance so for a value that we are actually exploring is for is for the first time the value will be whatever default value will put and we want that default to be bigger than two and so we can either put put infinity like um or we can just put minus one and check against my check that it, that it's not minus one it's not minus one and it's bigger than the current count right because because if it's then then that way we can just at the end just return whatever value we don't have to check if it's infinity um, to confirm that we found a solution or not right and so we can just say distances for um, in a range of for every one for every we can suppose that every one is not reachable at first which is the default value which the problem says that if it's not reachable it should return minus one so let's just suppose that every one is not reachable every point is not reachable and at first and that's the the case until we explore it and find um, the distance that it can be explored with and uh, with that we need also to um, we need to also find out um, so for the start position since the distance from the start to the start that's zero so we know that start zero start one that would be just zero and uh, now after that that we are here what is the distance that we are starting from we know that so far we reached x and y and from x and y we are going to reach these neighbors with, with these directions so we need to count we need to initialize with the count with the distance of x and y because that means whatever we are going to go through in this direction that would be added to this distance because that's where we are going from right and so then we are going to initialize the neighbor x and the neighbor y positions, which are going to be um, x plus dx and and y plus dy. Right? We can first initialize them to this to make sure that to, so that we can first check that it's not a boundary, it's not like the wall. We are not hitting the wall, so we initialize them to this and add. Um, the dx value as long as it's not reaching a wall. So what we are going to do with that is dx is in the boundaries. So we are going to check, of course, bigger than zero, less than the length of the maze. And um, same thing for y. Actually, it's an x since that's the neighbor's uh, position. Because we will keep the ball rolling. So keep the ball rolling in the current direction 
until reaching a wall, right? That's what we are doing. And so we are going to do plus dy and plus then maze zero. Um, and also we need to check that it's not a wall because when we reach a wall, um, the um, it stops, the ball stops. So an x plus dx and y plus dy. So basically that means that, so we can move only through empty spaces, so we need to check that it's equal to zero. Um, and in that case, we are going to, um, so only if it's a valid move, then we are going to do it, right? And then same thing for dy. And now, since we moved the ball, like say it's rolling from here, all the way down every time we move to here the ball rolls we need to add the count by one because that we are moving an additional distance and then another one another one so basically from here to here we'll go one two three four and so we need to count that and we need to add to the count of arriving at x and y and so that would be count plus one and after that we need to check um, if we so now that we have the neighbor and we move to the neighbor, we need to check if we found a better distance so that we can update the current distance. Um, and if if it's not a better distance, then we can just move along. And so the way we are going to do that is we are going to check the distance of um, n x and y. If that distance at that point is currently bigger than the count plus um, just the count that we arrived at because this is the new uh, the new distance that will, it will take to reach um, this position so if we found that count is less than this that means we found a better solution better distance right and so we need to update the current distance to be this new count right and so that means that um, distance of n x and y would become uh, count now, right? And we need to, since we have a better distance, so if we have a better distance to arrive here, to arrive here, for example, that means we certainly can arrive here with that better distance instead of the distance that we arrived at to this point before, because we'll keep adding two, and so it's possible that this one can be reached um, with a better distance by going from the new. Um, distance that we found that is better for this point, right? And so that means basically we need to explore arriving at that point again. And the way we are going to do that is just by adding to the queue the n, x, and y so that its neighbors also get explored so that we can um, see if, if there is a better solution, right? And then at the end, we can return distance of destination, arriving at destination. Since we filled all of them, um, so basically what we did here is we filled all the distance all the best distances moving from start to any other position right and so if there is one to the destination it would be here if there isn't one it would be the default value which is minus one and that's exactly what the problem asks us um, and so we can just run this let's run it on just one in this input um, so we have a problem for this minus one because it's a it's a, a 2D array actually. Um, okay. So. Oh yeah, so it's range of maze here, it should be range of length of maze. Ok, 
Okay, let's print. I think this distance may be. So we want for each row, let's see, print for. Okay, let me check that I didn't mess up my. Um, so we have the distances here, but it seems that we have a problem with one of these, uh, with this solution here, which returns 9. Uh, let's see if this one passes um, first. Okay, so this main one that we are testing with doesn't work. Okay, so let's see why. Um, let's see what mistake did we make. So one thing we didn't check here is that for the case minus one, so I said we can put inf, but we can also do minus one and then check it's not minus one and the current count is better. Because if it's minus one, we won't get through this. So that means we won't update for the first case ever. And so we need to check actually against minus one, uh, equal to minus one, because that means we haven't even found a, a path to this, to this position yet. So we need to fill it up if, with the new distance if the value was minus 1. And yeah, so that works and that's what the problem here. So let's just uncomment this and see if it passes. Uh, so we have a problem with this here because probably because of the this array here it has four dimensions but it does have five columns four rows and five columns so that means probably that we inverse reverse this and so yeah this is a very frequent uh, problem so we should be careful of it and uh, yeah so that passes for BFS uh, now last thing can we do this with DFS um, so we are not actually if you think about it we are not relying on any special properties of DFS to do this uh, because we are checking if there is a better distance every time and so we can do the exact same traversal with DFS and just um, find a solution that way um, and um, yeah I'll leave that to you but uh, yeah it, it, it's, it would be very easy to do the DFS um, just instead of adding to the queue you can add to the stack or do it recursively um, and, uh, and yeah that's all for now uh, see you next time. Bye.